Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Carmine Sabia for Explain America, and it looks like Attorney General Merrick Garland just got caught. Before we get started, please make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Those little things really help us out, and they help our channel continue to grow. Merrick Garland sat before the House today, and he was grilled on possible collusion efforts between himself and the office of Letitia James, himself and Fannie Willis, himself and Alvin Bragg, or his office and these people. And as a very simple way to prove it, Matt Gates pointed out what that way was, and he asked Merrick Garland if he would do it. And Merrick Garland dutifully avoided the question, danced around it, gave political answers, but wouldn't say, yes, I will prove to you there was no collusion, because I'll show you the communications. He wouldn't do it. Why? Why won't you do it, Mr. Garland, if you haven't weaponized the, de the Department of Justice, if you haven't weaponized the law against your political opponents, if we're not seeing Republican after Republican, connected or not connected to Trump, get nailed by your Department of Justice? There's a new story. It appears almost daily. So why is that if there's no collusion? Why is it if you're above board and haven't weaponized the law in the Department of Justice? I want you to watch Matt Gates take him down and watch how Merrick Garland dances around actually doing his job and then give me your opinions in the comments. Between the department and Alvin Bragg's office and Fonnie Willis's office and Letitia James's office. The offices you're referring to are independent offices of state. I get of, that. I get that. State. The question is whether or not you will provide all of your documents and correspondence. That's the question. It's, I, I don't need a, a history lesson. Well... I'm going to say again, we do not control those offices. They make yeah, their the own decisions. The question is whether decisions. you communicate with them, not whether you control them. Do you communicate with them and will you provide those communications? If you make a request, we'll refer it to our Office of Legislative but, Affairs. But see, here's the thing. They you come in here and you lodge this attack that it's a conspiracy theory that there is coordinated lawfare against Trump. And then when we say, fine, just give us the documents, give us the correspondence, and then if it's a conspiracy theory, that will be evident. But when you say, well, we'll take your request, and then we'll, we'll sort of work it through the DOJ's accommodation process, then you're actually advancing the very dangerous conspiracy theory that you're concerned about. Now, you're, you were a judge, once nominated the highest court in our country. When you were a judge, I'm just curious, did you ever make political donations to partisan candidates? No. No, and, and you didn't because that would create the potential appear, appearance of impropriety. I didn't it? because there's a federal rule oh. barring federal judges from making contributions. Right, but, but under that same theory of attacks on the judicial process, like shouldn't someone be owed like a jury of their peers and a judge that's non-biased rather than getting a judge from your political opponent's donor file? I'm well aware that you're not asking a hypothetical. You're asking me to comment on a verdict, jury verdict in a, another jurisdiction which has to be respected. I won't comment on it. That case is still ongoing. The defendant Mr. Attorney indicated. General, I hadn't asked you about the verdict yet. We were getting there. I was, I was talking about the judge. And so, so let me ask you this question about your time as, as a judge. Was